My name is Latina. I'm 52 years old. I'm from Sherman, Texas. And my story is a story of abuse and molestation. I was born an only child. And when I was born to my mom, she was 15 years old. So my grandparents stepped in. I had my grandmother and my step-grandfather and my mom's dad. And when I was born, they took over. My grandmother actually raised me and she adopted me from my mom at that time because my mom wasn't old enough to take care of me and she really just didn't take care of me the way that she was supposed to. She used to come and tell me she would come and see me or pick me up and things like that. I would see her, but she never showed up. It would be my birthday and she would always say, Mama, go come back and get you. And it was the points that I would wait on her, but she would never show up. And, and it was like till my grandparents just got to the point to where they just didn't want her to come around anymore. So they stopped her from coming because she was like making promises she didn't keep. Living with my grandparents was, it was good because I was able to, you know, and be a kid. But the only thing that I didn't have was structure. I was allowed to, you know, do things and have fun. And my grandmother just basically, she raised me with my mom's sisters, basically. So I was more like their sister than their niece. And I just was able to do, you know, a lot of stuff more than them. But I didn't have no, really no structure or no punishment or anything like that. I was basically spoiled by my grandmother and my grandfather now. You know, I was getting stuff, going places and going back to California. I used to go to San Diego with my mom's dad and then I'll come back to Texas. I would go in the summertime and so he would take me everywhere. My favorite place was Knott's Berry Farm in San Diego. So I used to go there and I learned how to swim and growing up, you know, doing all those things, my grandfather didn't really know. So he was just mostly being an active role as a dad in my life because I didn't know who my father was. At the age of 12, my grandmother decided that my mom needed to see what it was like to be a parent. So when my grandmother told my mom she was going to let her keep me as far as, you know, giving me back, you know, letting her have me, my mom was living in the, we call it the projects during that time. So I ended up moving in with my mom. Living with my mom, everything changed. The whole dynamic changed. I had to be in the house at six o'clock. I got in trouble for everything. I think that's when I started acting out more because I was able to have a life and then moving in with my mom, I really didn't have a life. So I was having friends come over because she would make me come in at six o'clock and it would be still daylight when my friends were still outside. And I would get in trouble for the least little thing. She never really put her hands on me. She would whip me with a fly swatter, but it was the fact that how she did me what made a difference from my grandparents to, to her. When I was living with my grandparents, my mom began dating this guy that she had known for years, and they had moved in together. So when the time the time that I moved in with her, he was already living there. He never really said a lot, you know, he portrayed it to be a nice person. My mom, she put the men before me. So I, that's why I really never got to see her because her lifestyle was important and I could say what I thought was than me. So when I started living there, I, I think I started acting out, but it wasn't until I turned 14 that things started shifting. And I used to get in trouble a lot. And I used to go out and steal and do things with other friends. I would, some would say a boosting and I would get stuff she never knew about it, though, until when she found out about it, she got real mad. But she would work the night shift, and I remember one time she told me to go, she would always tell me to go get in the bed with him. Instead of sleeping in the bed by myself, she told me to go get in the bed with him. But during that time, nothing happened at that time. It wasn't until I got in trouble, and during those days, he was like the man that knew everybody. He knew the sheriff of our city and he could go and talk to them and do all this stuff. So during that time, he was telling me that he could help me get out of the trouble that I was in. So he told my mom he was gonna go take me and talk to the people and all that. So we get in the car 
and we leave. But before we go to where we were supposed to go, he end up making a, the opposite turn to go to another way. Me not knowing where we were going, he's saying that he had to go talk to someone. So we're driving and I'm not thinking of nothing. So we end up pulling at this uh, hotel. And it, I never forget it. It's called the Cardinal Hotel. And it's like a, it was like a little U shape. And he pulled up in there, it was very dark. And he pulled up in the front, like you go to the front desk. And he paid, I, well, I don't know what he did, but he went in there. I'm assuming he paid for a room or whatever. And we pull up to this room. Right to this day, I can go to that same room. So we sitting in there and, and he told me that he had to make a phone call. I'm just sitting on the bed waiting. So while he did what he did, he turned to me, and I'm sitting on the bed, and he asked me, he said, have you ever had anybody to go down on you? And I looked, and I was like, no. So he proceeds to get up, and when he gets up, he grabs my, my like this, and he has them both, and as he grabs them, he pushed me back on the bed. So while he pushing me back on the bed, he has another hand, and he's trying to pull, pull my clothes down. But as he proceeds to pull my clothes down, he's going, he's taking himself down on me. So while he's taking himself down on me, I'm fighting him to get off of me. But he do put himself on me and everything. And as he's proceeding to go further, I don't know how I got out of it. But I got I got him off of me, and I was able to take the chain off the door, and I ran out of ran out naked. I had my clothes in there. I ran out, and it was just like in a movie, and I could see, just like it was just dark. You could see just the lights and stuff. Nobody was around, so I just I kept walking. So when I kept walking, I was walking on the highway. And the car pulled up, and it was him. Me scared, not knowing what to do, and I don't have no ride, so I get back in the car, and I get in the car, and I shut the door. And I didn't say a word. And his exact words were, if you tell your mom, she's not going to believe you. She's going to believe me. Me not knowing, so we proceed to go home. I run in the house, shut my door. I'll say two days passed. I had this best friend, and I went to her house. She, they lived up the street from me, her and her mom. And I went and I told her mother what happened. And so her mom asked me, she said, well, do you want to um, go down there and talk to your mom? And I said, yes. So when as we go down there, and she called my mom out. She said, Tina got something to tell you. So I proceeds to tell my mom what happened. And when I tell my mom, she calls him out of the, the room. So when she asked, when she said that to him, he denied it. But her words were, you mean you want to put your mouth on my daughter and do those things that you don't even do to me? And it hit me and it just my friends was looking at each other and we looked and he said my she's a mf lie he cussed me she's lying so we looked so i left with my friend and we went i went to the house and stuff i just i didn't know how to take that it hurted me because it was my mom and i thought that her words would be different than that i thought she would protect me so i end up have to leave the police and everything got involved so i end up have to leave not him, me. And I end up living with my aunt. And my, we went to court and my aunt had custody of me. That she had visitation rights. So when she came to visit me, my aunt told, she brought him with her. So my aunt told her, she said, Irene, you know that you're not, he's not supposed to be here. So she said, well, if he uh, can't come, then I'm, I'm not staying. And she left. So she chose him again over me and it was like time going by and I got pregnant at 15 years old and I'll never forget when my, I was pregnant I had my my child my mom married me off to my son's dad at 15 I didn't know how to be a right so I I ran away so during that time as time go by I get pregnant again with my second child now I'm at my mom's house sleeping on the couch no one was there so I wouldn't lay down me and my son and I kept feeling something you know and I didn't think none of it and I kept feeling something real soft when I opened my eyes he was on his knees going up under my clothes and I immediately jumped up 
And I'm like, what are you doing? And he was down there trying to put his mouth on me. And I had to push him off. And I grabbed my son and I left. I had my own place at that time. I know I was like 16 or 17. And he followed me. He ended up coming to my place and he was knocking on the door, asking me, was I okay? And I never opened the door. And I told him, I'm fine. Go away. You know, and he was knocking on the door. And it was just like constantly this man, no matter what, he was trying to make his way. In doing all of that, I was in an abusive relationship. Men were the abuser to me. I'd never been in a relationship. I had kids. I got on, I used to snort. And I was always being abused by my kid's dad. He stabbed me, beat me, raped me, cut me. I just felt like I wasn't loved. I didn't know my dad. I didn't know nothing about my family. So it was men. It was always men who hurted me. And I made a promise to myself when I had kids that I wouldn't be that way. My kid's dad, he raped me, he locked me up, he cut me, I have cuts on my arms. But as time went by, I can say I've been through hell. I've been raped, beaten, stabbed, shot. I've been through a lot. He knocked my, my teeth, my teeth, I have a chip tooth, all this stuff. But I can say by the grace of God, he saved me. I didn't know, but through all of the things that I went through, I found my dad, my birth dad. He never knew me, but I found him. I have a family that I didn't even know nothing about that loves me unconditionally, that treated me like someone. I didn't never know what love felt like through all of the things that I've been through in life. And I got baptized. And when I got baptized, I knew the love of God because I didn't know what it felt like until I accepted Christ into my life. And when I accepted Christ into my life, things started happening because I went to jail. About a couple of times I went to jail because of the things that I kept getting into. But I got saved. And when I got saved, I changed my life around. And I started a candle business. I do birthday parties. I write poems. And now I'm trying to write me a book about my life. But my mom, before she died, she told me that she knew. And she apologized to me. And she said that day that he took me, she saw him go the other way. And she kept quiet until the day he died. And before she took her last breath, she told me those things. But she never said it when I needed her to say it and when I needed her. But I forgave her, but it was hard to love her because I didn't know how to love because I wasn't given love. That what made me try to kill myself and, you know, been the therapy and did all that. But I can stand here today and say that I have been made new by Christ Jesus. I don't know who believe in God, but I believe in God. And I know that he's real. And I know that he saved me. Yes, yeah, sometimes it hurts. And I miss my mom because we didn't get to get the things together that we should have. But I knew that deep down somewhere she did love me. She was very young, but she didn't protect me. I didn't have structure. And I quit school in the 10th grade. So I never got my GED to know that I've been held hostage, put at gunpoint. I've been threatened. I've been through a lot of things that people don't even know. When my mom married me off to my oldest son's um, dad, he was on drugs. He had got on drugs. He was smoking. So this one day I was at it. Me and my son was there. Him and his brother was sitting at a table and he wanted some. Well, he, his brother told him to allow the, the, the drug dealer to come over. And he said, well, to give him, he wanted a 50. That's what they call a 50 rock. So in order to get it, the guy liked me, the drug dealer liked So he told him that, to let him talk to me to get the... So he actually sold me for drugs. So when the man come in, we was in a room. He let him come in while they were sitting at the table smoking so he really, he sold me not for one rock, not for 150, but for two. He sold them for a hundred dollars. That's how much I was worth for him. And it was like, I guess he realized it later on down the line because I left. And I ended up going to the drug dealer. And when he found out about that, he got upset 
And he came to the house where I was and he pulled out a gun because I'd end up leaving with the drug dealer because the drug dealer started taking care of me and my and my son. At the time, I only had one kid. He, I had just had my baby. So I was just pounded off and pounded off from different people in my life to when I got with the drug dealer. Then he started abusing me. And then it's when he raped me. He tied a, the telephone cord around my throat. He took a sheet and he stuffed it in my mouth. And that's where he cut me on my arms. And then he took the alcohol and he would pour it in my cuts. And he made me lay down and he told me if I hollered, he would pull the, my middle part out of my, between my legs. He was performing sex on me in a way that a man would, i say, raping me. So I wasn't able to do anything but sit there and take it. And I still have the cuts and the things on my leg and my arms today from what he did to me. And it was just like, why? Why? I don't get it. And it's, this was one thing after another one thing after another. So that part, that was, he raped me. It, it wasn't, it was basically like, I belong to him so he could do whatever he wanted to do. If I didn't want to, he did it anyway. So I took that. I couldn't do anything because if I did, he was gonna hurt me even more. After I'm sitting there bleeding while he's doing his job. So I'm just sitting there. And remind you, I was pregnant with another child. I had a total of six kids. I would have had nine, but I aborted some. So I ended up having six of them. When I had my kids, I knew that they loved me because they was all that I had. You know, and I, I raised my children by myself. I was doing things that I needed to do to raise my kids. But the urges of me getting out there and being with people and doing other things, that never crossed my mind because I had so much hate. I didn't even know how to love. And I'll never forget one time, I used to be so angry that I used to sometimes take it out on my kids, you know, because of what I've been through. But I made a promise that I would never do that, never hurt them, because I, I know what they needed because I didn't get what they needed. And that was love.